Next up, as we continue this, we're going to go from our previous site when this used to be on. Now we're going to release the bus. Our voltage here goes here. This is now off. That means this current is zero. You'll notice that we have two capacitors here because we're going to have some transient effects. There's always a capacitance on these nodes and it's actually an issue. That's why I2C is, uh, can be slow. Uh, if you're not, especially if you're not careful. All right, so what happens uh, in this? Remember, uh, this has an initial condition of zero volts. That's how we started. The moment that we let this off, our drain current of the MOSFET turns to zero, or goes to zero, and we have current that flows through our pull-up resistor. Okay, but it can't go to the left. It can go to the right, though, and it can charge up our capacitor. So keep that uh, current into uh, view. Also remember that this uh, node started at zero. This is still 3.3. This starts at zero and is going to increase because we're charging this capacitor. Current is still flowing from here through our MOSFET and it's charging the capacitor, so we're charging up at a, uh, a larger rate. No current through the diode, of course, because it's reverse biased. This capacitor also started off at zero volts and is going to increase. What does this look like in time? Well, let's draw a little picture here. We have so time axis. Here's zero. This is the moment that uh, our MOSFET switches off. I'll draw a line here just for uh, just for fun. All right, so we have V low minus the threshold. Here's V low, which is 3.3 .3 volts. And then we have V high uh, way up here. So that's our setup. At time equals zero, our voltage across the capacitor starts at uh, zero. So I'm going to use, let's see, this one. Blue is going to be my uh, low side, and red is the uh, high side voltage. Let's look at what happens on the left side. We have our bus capacitor. It's charging up. It's going to charge up and it's going to come up. All right, so this is it looks like an RC circuit. They're an RC sort of waveform because indeed it is. Here's our C. Here's our R. We do have additional current flowing through here. Remember that this voltage across the MOSFET is about zero-ish uh, when this transistor is just fully turned on. So it's still an RC. It's just R pull-up one in parallel with pull-up two. At this point, we have V low, call that V low, All right? V low minus the threshold. When this node, when our output node, I'm going up and down, when our output node hits uh, V low minus the threshold, okay, so 3.3 .3 minus the threshold, this MOSFET turns off. Okay, and in this region, transistor MN1 is in triode mode. At the same time, we have our uh, right side. We do have a little bit larger voltage across here. This is because this is RDS on, the on resistance of our MOSFET. And when we hit here, up until this point, we're in triode mode. Yeah, sure, we might go into saturation mode. It doesn't matter, it's just on. At this point, our MOSFET will turn off. Two Fs. When that MOSFET is turned off, there's no connection. There's no connection here. Our uh, diode still remains reverse biased. And now I see just an RC circuit. I see another RC circuit, and they're going to be independent of each other. They will start at the same, or nearly the same uh, condition. 
and then they're just gonna continue on continue on all right so we have this one v low put an asymptote over here we're gonna increase 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 our slope will change at this point but then this would be s d a low and at the same time we're gonna increase up to s d a high or the 5 volts in our case and go like this the exact uh, slopes at these points when the MOSFET turns off which means uh, puts those two nodes to be independent of each other um, it will change and exactly how they change depends on the values of, of the pull-up resistors this is the circuit that we'll see uh, if you run a simulation of this 